welcome to all of our gold learning viewers. I'm Fiona Lang Sharp, IBCLC Public Relations Manager and MC for Gold Learning. Well, welcome. Today I get to sit down with Dr. Marion Rice, who's going to be speaking at our upcoming Gold Lactation Conference, and her presentation is titled Biological Integrity, Ethics and Control Over Human Milk. What a fascinating title. I'm just so excited to hear more. I know that this is something that is very near and dear to your heart, Marion. So thank you so much for taking the time to put all the work and effort into presenting this. Well, thank you for having me. So you very spoken controversial for, topic. <laughs> yeah, it, it is for sure. And and I know you have spoken for us before, Marion, but why don't you go ahead and um, it, just introduce yourself again to our listening audience and tell them what prompted you to focus on this area of human milk. Right. Well, um, you know, it's it's just such a exploding field. Um, we know that human milk is 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 so important to lifelong health, right? And and so um, in this country, in in the U.S., we really don't have um, a firm definition. You know, is is human milk a tissue? Is it a food? And the FDA um, about ten years ago had a big meeting with stakeholders, including Himbana and CDC folk and Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine folk and the United States Breastfeeding Committee, and decided, you know, whoa. We don't need to make this decision right now. You know, the, the, the way Himbana is pasteurizing human milk is evidence-based, seems to be working. But 10 years has passed, and now we have human milk companies. Um, and we still don't have, you know, agreed-upon definitions of how to talk about it. Human milk companies that pay for milk call it donor human milk um, because people donate blood, people donate plasma. They get paid to donate plasma. But is it really donor milk by the traditional definition, which is, you know, uh, Hambana Milk Bank women give the milk? No, it's a paid milk model. So, you know, I'm focused on sussing out all these questions and trying to engage our community of, of advocates and, and specialists and, and everyone who needs to, to be able to know what's happening to be able to take action if, if necessary. And so you know, I'm focused here in Oregon. We have two human milk companies in Oregon. And we have a 93% breastfeeding initiation rate. And about 60% of all babies are born to women who qualify for it. So we have high breastfeeding and high economic need. And if you're a company paying for milk, where, where might you want to be? Wow, that's we also, great. We, we also don't have any regulation designating right. human milk a tissue or a food. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into it. Well, that's great. That's great. Thank you so much, Marian, for sharing that. And it is very interesting not only hearing, you know, what led you into it, but what is what is actually transpiring now. So can you tell me uh, when you when you were working in this area and you started looking at it um, as a focal point, what what became, you know, important to you in this area? What were some of the discoveries that you had? Well, um, you know, human milk is not just a product or a resource. It is so much more than that. It is life-giving. And those of us who have nursed babies, who have shared milk, who have provided milk to a milk bank for medically fragile and vulnerable babies, um, understand this deeply. Um, and so I think it's you know, just super important that the, the, the people who produce the resource, the, the people who ca are caregivers of that resource that is meant for a, a baby, a, an infant, um, are, are at the table in, in deciding, you know, how this, how this resource is used for you know, therapies or other products. And I'm not sure really that those conversations are happening. So that is a huge focus point for me is to, to you know, be a disruptor, someone who says, well, hey, everybody, this is happening. What do you think about it? Not necessarily to define what the outcome should be um, because right. that's not how I come to things. It's really about building community engagement and awareness and understanding so that people can, you know, have a call to action if they feel it's necessary. So that's that's where I'm at right now is 
really as a convener in the field. Well, and that's, I think that's such an important place to be. I know sometimes you get a bit of flack, you know, wh you know if you're that person that's asking the, the, the questions, if you're stopping people in their tracks um, to evaluate what's happening, um, sometimes you can be called a rabble rouser, you know, but without people like you, Marion, then realistically, where would we be? We'd just be doing the same thing over and over again. And that's really, that is a sort of form of insanity, especially when it's not working, right? And that's what's happened for many, many years. So I have to say, I appreciate that you take the effort and, um, you know, sometimes just takes a lot of energy sometimes to put yourself in that position, wouldn't you say? Yeah. But, you know, babies are dying, right? Right? That's what my friends say, my colleagues say, you know, awesome. and, yeah. and and the milk isn't meant for us. So right. how do they have a voice? And and I so appreciate your girl because yeah. it is. Sometimes yeah. it's hard, but, you know, no, we're all bad. in this together, yeah. I, yeah, I think as I've matured in this field, I have come to appreciate and understand that we need to stop and think, and we need to have many of those moments where we stop and think before we take action, um, and it's important that even when we have taken that action, that we have an evaluation process that continues to look at what we're doing, because um, we can't keep repeating things just because someone did it before us or that's the way it's always been done. So, you know, looking at it from that angle is, is extremely important. So I have one more question for you, of course, before we let you go today. Um, but can you tell me what are you looking forward to sharing with the delegates during your presentation? Oh, you know, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, just having some of these questions emerge for, for the delegates, getting their feedback, um, you know, um, hoping to see them um, begin to think about, wow, I, you know, there's so much happening in the human milk sphere um, between milk sharing and milk selling and uh, milk banking um, right. that, you know, even to be able to compartmentalize and think about those three spheres um, and how they may be interrelated or not, um, and what they, you know, sussing out what they think, and ideally, hopefully, um, they will share. Right. Excellent. Well, I too, I think conversation is, you know, one of the best places to start, and since you, you're one of those conversation starters, I think you represent this topic very well. So I look forward to not only having some more conversations with you, Marion, but also from our listening audience too. This is a really good topic and a very important topic that we do need to be talking about. So it will be great to hear uh, people's opinions and perspectives in this area. So thank you, Marion, for sitting down with me here today. It's been great chatting with you. Thank you. And to our listening audience, we look forward to having you join us for our Gold Lactation Conference 2017, which will include Dr. Marion Rice. She'll be addressing biological integrity, ethics, and control of human milk. The conference starts on April 1st, so we'll look forward to having you there. Bye-bye for now, everyone.